This is a download from BFM 89.9, the business station. It's Fun Friday. My name is Jeff Sandu. You can tell when Culture Pop's Matt Armitage has something on his mind. The air is more still somehow. The pressure and the temperature drops. It's not the eye of the storm exactly. It's more like the centre of madness, knowing that no matter which way you move, you're about to be plunged into a whirling insanity. That's fine if you're listening at home where you can easily switch him off. It's a little bit more scary when you're locked inside a small soundproof studio with him on the phone. Matt, what's on your mind this time round? Hey, Jeff. Sorry I can't make it into the uh, studio today. As you can hear, my, my voice is a little bit messed up. Um, but yeah, it's, it's Facebook. They've gone and done something silly again. And this time, it's one of those genuine, real, oh my gosh, mic drop moments. It's the portal. Yeah. Um, now, back in 2012, Mark Zuckerberg told the world that Facebook was not in the business of making hardware. So you jump to October 2018, and suddenly Facebook is making hardware. Specifically, it's making the portal, which is a voice-activated communication screen that works uh, rather like Amazon's Echo devices. To be fair, Facebook has been in the hardware game for a few years since it bought over Oculus, that virtual reality specialist. Yeah, but that was as much about bringing Facebook up to speed with the kind of virtual reality community in general. It wasn't because the company was desperate to become the world leader in selling Mole Man goggles. Uh, the Portal device has been on the cards for a long time. Reports suggest that it was delayed for six months. And the reasons for that delay are one of the reasons that we're talking about it today. Now, regular listeners will probably have noticed that we don't pay much attention to gadget releases for this particular show. So gadgets have to be really, really good or very, very bad in order to grab our attention. <laughs> I'll take a guess. The portal is very, very good. <laughs> uh, well, I think the portal may up may end up belonging in a, in a category roughly alongside that smart hairbrush that we loved <laughs> so much last year and the year before. So for those of you who really don't care about these things and who haven't heard what Facebook has been up to this week, the Portal, and that's Portal with a capital P, is a smart communications device. It's Bluetooth speaker, home hub, all that, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, attached to a big screen. So it's basically Facebook Messenger on your TV. And it's ugly, it's slow, and it doesn't work at all. No, it's none of those things. I mean, one of the, the wonders of the particular age that we find ourselves in is that there are very few truly bad electronic devices. Yes, I mean, you can find yourself in trouble if you opt for one of those generic brands that don't meet international safety requirements and all that kind of thing. But by and large, anything that comes out of a reputable company, including Facebook, is usually half decent in terms of build and design and functionality. But that's not the same thing as saying that it's something you need or that it's actually a good idea. Now, it being a bad idea is not really a justification for taking up half an hour of everyone's Friday morning here, Matt. No, I agree. And if it was a bad idea, we could mention it on the Geek Squawk and never talk about it again because that's where we send bad ideas to die in the fires of public opinion. <laughs> but this is a truly terrible idea. This is a crushingly and excruciatingly terrible, terrible idea. This is like that idea you have of calling your ex at 4 a.m. to tell him or her how happy you are and how over that person you are. This is like following up that call and driving over to that person's house before dawn because, you know, there's a really good all-night burger place next door. And then leaving a burger with no note as a breakfast gift in their letterbox because, hey, they'll know you left it there for love. It's safe to say you think it's a bad idea. If you had a checklist of reasons not to manufacture and launch something, the portal checks every single box. So... Let's start with it as a gadget in and of itself. It does have some cool features. So it has a camera that can be locked to your face so you can move around the room and the camera tracks you, um, which is nice. But I wouldn't say it's that competition killer feature because it's the kind of thing that you can imagine will be introduced into its competitors with a simple software update. It does has a cool storytelling feature for kids. 
Yeah, and that's another one of its uh, selling points. So let's go back to that Oculus Rift collaboration. You know, Facebook is getting pretty good at augmented reality, and the portal has some cool AR features. So the theory is here that you can read your kids a bedtime story when you're not at home, and the screen becomes interactive. So elements of the story pop up on the screen, and those funny animations uh, can pop up around your own face as the story progresses. So, for example, Grandpa might suddenly morph into the big bad wolf, although that's not necessarily a good thing. (laughs) Surely that means it's not a terrible idea. Well, you'd think so, except that I was on a panel at the BFM Health event last weekend, and parents are all looking for ways to decrease the screen time that their kids have, because we know that looking at screens before bedtime is disruptive, it can disrupt sleep patterns. We also know that one way to read kids a story over a video link is the simple analog one. Just have two copies of the darn book. You read from one and the kids look at the other. It's not rocket science, you know, you don't have to reinvent the book and call it a bus. <laughs> this is kind of busy work. It's making nothing into something. You don't think it does enough? I really don't understand the purpose. It's basically Facebook Messenger in a device that costs you $200 US or $350 if you want one with a large rotating screen. It must have apps. It does, and I imagine the App Store will increase in scope and scale over time. Um, You can also use it as one of those photo display thingies. So I imagine that we're going to see some fairly tight integration with Instagram because Facebook owns that as well. But what it doesn't seem to want you to do is escape onto the Internet at large. It's really dedicated to serving up content from within Facebook. And when you do escape outside Facebook's ecosystem, It actually surrenders control to Amazon's Alexa, making it, if it's possible, actually the worst of all worlds. And, you know, there's an enormous number of issues that come along with that. Like younger consumers not wanting to use Facebook. Well, that's one issue for sure. Uh, I don't see how this device addresses any of those generation gap issues unless it plans to simply skip that generation. You know, maybe it's trying to get the buy-in for the device from its older consumers, but also from that youngest generation of parents. So they get their own kids into the habit of using Facebook, uh, using the screen at a very early age. But we also know that Facebook has already created huge amounts of controversy with its Messenger Kids app. Because of the privacy and data tracking issues here, right? Uh, Yeah. um, The way to approach content... um, for kids is one of the was one of the things that the technology industry is struggling with in general. That's not something that's just limited to Facebook, because it's all very well for adults to ignore the terms and conditions and just click agree on every app they download. And you know, let's face it, that's what we all do. It's what I do as well. But do parents have the right to ignore the details of that contract when they're agreeing to it on their child's behalf? Because when you talk about data gathering, there are very big and very long-term implications. But that's not actually one of my biggest problems with the portal. It's just part of this kind of whole laundry list of objections. So what are your biggest problems with it? I don't understand why it exists in the first (laughs) place. Um, Like I said, it's basically a giant Facebook Messenger app with a screen. But Facebook Messenger is the app from Facebook that everybody hates. So if you're going to make an expensive piece of hardware, at least base it on the parts of your service that people actually genuinely like. It's a bit like Subway suddenly decided to stop selling the inside bits of the sandwich and just sold us bread. That's not what we want. You know, you can get better bread pretty much anywhere. It's the fillings, it's the sauces that make it a Subway sub. And it's kind of like that with the portal. It basically does one thing that we don't want and ignores the bits that we do. And we could just use our phone. Exactly, that's the point. You know, what does Facebook Portal offer you that no other device does? Uh, You can use your phone or your tablet or your laptop to do exactly what this device can do, namely video calling and showing your photos. And those devices have the benefit of doing a lot of other things besides. So you have to ask, why would someone spend that kind of money on this device? Not just that, why would anyone want to buy multiples of this device? Because 
even though we say they're portable, we know we're all lazy. Amazon has recognized that. That's why its Echo devices come in such a huge range of configurations and price points, because it makes it easier for them to, to be dotted around your home if you've decided to buy into that ecosystem. So if you're already facing the cost of buying phones and tablets for everyone in your family, which do all of the things that the portal offers, why would you then spend potentially thousands more dollars on something like this? Matt is losing his voice. He's on a rant. When we come back, more reasons to fuel your irrational hatred. We'll be right back. BFM 89.9. And we're back. My name is Jeff Sandu, together with Culture Pops, Matt Armitage. Before the break, Matt was making the case that Facebook's portal device is a step in the wrong direction for the company. We talked about companies like Amazon. Is what Facebook doing really so different here, Matt? It's not that it's different. It's more about the purpose that lies behind it. So if you have one of Google's home devices or one of Amazon's Echo series, you've made that decision to buy into the ecosystem. So with Google, you get all the power and access of the internet built into your device. You get your Netflix, your Spotify, or your other services. And with the Echoes, there's an even tighter sense of integration. Because you're linking into Amazon's retail system. Yeah, you know, you have the ability to buy goods from Amazon's network of retail sites, which, as we've mentioned in countless shows, seems to be expanding a little like our own universe <laughs> at an ever-increasing rate and into who knows what. Uh, very soon, I think, we're not going to be able to even see the outer edges of Amazon's empire. And that's okay. You know, that's not the issue here. By and large, the company is upfront about the way the devices behave. And you know that there's going to be a trade-off in privacy when you decide to buy one of these devices. But the portal does a lot of that same stuff. Yes. I mean, you can listen to services like Spotify and the portal. I'm not sure whether they're going to have apps for contact like Netflix because Facebook is pushing its own TV service. And to be fair, Amazon has its own prime video streaming service as well as its own music streaming services. Uh, but as I said, in terms of access and connectivity, Facebook is somehow offering us the worst of all worlds. In terms of privacy? Yeah, because the company is saying that it won't be listening to you. It won't be passing data to third parties when you're accessing content outside of its main site. So that's a good thing? No, it's actually a bad thing because as soon as you step out of that Facebook-specific content, you do so using Amazon's Alexa. So suddenly you have one device that's harvesting your personal habits for two very large, very data-hungry companies. And this is very definitely an example from a consumer standpoint where less equals more. In Facebook's defense, it has installed hardware stops to prevent the cameras and microphones being switched on remotely. Yeah, I mean, you can isolate them from the operating system so that they can't be bridged or hacked into. And that's definitely a good thing. But it's also a measure of how low our trust in Facebook is that it offers that functionality on its devices. And that kind of brings me to another reason that I don't understand why this device exists. Because we don't trust Facebook. Precisely. You know, the, the backlash against Facebook this year in terms of trust and privacy and intrusion has been incredible. Amazon tends to get away with it a bit more because it's seen as more of a retail rather than a lifestyle company. And obviously, that's more about perception than reality because Amazon is working really hard to blur or basically erase those boundaries between retail and lifestyle. But this is the climate of trust that we currently find ourselves in. So it's no surprise when we hear reports that launch of the portal was delayed by six months because of the Cambridge Analytica scandal. So it seems weird to me that it wasn't put on a more permanent hiatus or even sent back to the lab to be you know, kind of completely reconfigured. Again, to be fair to Facebook, they're not the only tech company facing privacy and regulatory issues here. And that actually goes towards reinforcing my point. Um, only this week we heard that Amazon has had to abandon uh, its vaunted uh, AI that it was hoped would revolutionize recruitment and human resources mm. because the uh, data it was built on led it to discriminate against female job candidates. So of the social media companies, 
Facebook has actually been the most transparent and seemingly the most willing to address its failings. Um, Twitter and Google's responses have been woeful at the very best, and Twitter still seems to cherry pick the people who have to adhere to its community standards and the people who don't. And this week we learned that Google is shutting down the consumer side of its Google Plus social media service. Yeah, which we're going to talk about in more detail in uh, in Geeks after the break. But, you know, it's it's easy to forget that Google even has a social media service because most people have done just that. They've forgotten about it. Um, and as you said, this week we found out that Google is going to close the service. We also found out that uh, third parties had been able to breach user data, although we're not sure if they actually did. Um, but in much the same way that Cambridge Analytica was able to exploit Facebook system. So they took advantage of a bug that allowed them to see the information of their friends um, and see uh, information that, that they hadn't been given consent to, to access. And rather than admit that that bug had been exploited, of course, Google decided to stay silent. In theory, then, Facebook is actually ahead of the game. When it comes to transparency, yes, Um, and especially as only last month it admitted to a further data breach uh, to around 50 million accounts, and that's kind of why I described the portal launch as being this kind of mic drop moment. This is the time where Facebook should be rebuilding trust, rebuilding its reputation. Launching a device that is as potentially intrusive as the portal in a climate and atmosphere of these kind of historic levels of distrust is a completely appalling decision for the company. You know, every company gets to a a point in its history where it comes to a tipping point where changes in direction can push it towards success or push it into decline. And this, for me, you know, it's teetering on the edge of that indication of decline. You know, you'll be laughing on the other side of your face when Mark Zuckerberg is crowned world leader in a few years' time. I will be because I still think it's going to be Jeff Bezos who uh, ends up as emperor of the world and all that lies beyond. Um, I understand that Facebook has unexpectedly found itself out of place and out of step with the times. And that's a really, really strange place to be for a company that's as big as Facebook and is also as young as Facebook. You know, we, we forget that the company is only around 20 years old or less than 20 years old. But that is the nature and the cruel, cruel nature of the world of technology. You mean adapt or die? Well, yeah, you know, Facebook doesn't seem to be paying much heed to that idea. It seems intent on bending its customers towards what it wants, which is precisely the way that companies die. Uh, When you look at the tech cemetery, it's full of the rotting remains of companies who thought they owned their users. And that's one of the things that Amazon is so good at. They come from that retail space. They know how to court their customers. They know that they have to give them special offers. They have to flatter them, make them feel special. They have to actually earn that trust. Should we give them that trust? Well, what concerns me is that uh, Facebook and Google and Twitter all seem to think that they deserve our trust. But when you look at a company like Microsoft... It's so much more customer focused now. It has a much softer approach than it did in the 1990s and the early noughties. Think how much we used to moan about Microsoft and its products, the bugs, the crashes, and the indifference from the company. But how often do you moan about Microsoft today? And that's kind of what makes Amazon such a dangerous rival. Amazon is turning entire industries and retail sectors upside down. But it keeps customers happy. It keeps the consumers on site. And that's something I think Facebook is not managing to achieve. We should love Facebook. We shouldn't resent it. Can Facebook turn it around? I honestly don't know. Um, I do know that they're not the only company who's put a lot of time and money into uh, a silly idea and come out on the other side. Um, Look at pretty much everything that Apple did in the 90s. Uh, The Newton was a great product, but, you know, it was 20 years too early for the infrastructure. Ditto all those Palm Pilots and Pocket PCs of the early noughties. By the time the technology caught up, 
we could shoehorn everything that those things did into a smartphone. Uh, look at Google Glass, look at Snapchat's ongoing attempts to sell us weird camera fixed sunglasses. And of course, you have Amazon's own very weird and very unsuccessful Fire Phone. So you're saying tech companies shouldn't stray too far? I'm saying that they should question their own motives. Um, look at Google's Pixel phones as an example. So the Pixel 3 came out this week, and it's really interesting. It integrates artificial intelligence into a smartphone in new and really cool ways. Um, that ranges from the way it handles data to the way it creates photos. And I mean that literally. It doesn't take photos as much as it creates them from multiple data sources and angles. It's quite astonishing. Mm, although it does look like a very ugly phone. But Google's Pixel phones <laughs> aren't really a mass market device, though. No, and that's why it doesn't really matter that it's an ugly phone, because Samsung will probably sell more Android phones in a week than Google will sell in a year. When you buy a Pixel, you're essentially buying into an alpha test of what smartphones can be and what Google's operating system is going to be in the future. And I think that's where Facebook's portal fails. It seems to exist only to make Mark Zuckerberg's life better. It doesn't seem to exist to make ours. And that's just completely the wrong way around. Definitely a mic drop moment there. Matt Amatej uh, from culturepop.com. You can find out the transcripts of these shows on the website. It's culturepop with a K. Com. We'll be right back with Geek Squawks after this, BFM 89.9. Thank you for listening to this podcast. To find more great interviews, go to bfm.my or find us on iTunes. BFM 89.9, The Business Station.